The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Jesus answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. Jesus said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that Jesus might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And Jesus took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. The theme of my homily this morning is marriage is a responsibility. Marriage is a responsibility. My dear friends in Christ, marriage is both a human and a divine institution, which means it is the man who will leave his father and his mother and clings to his wife, whoever he has seen, that we have a kind of march. And it is the responsibility of that woman to also see whoever that has approached her and accept that person's proposal very natural, very human. And that is why it is the woman who decides who she will marry. It is the man who decides who to approach in marriage. So if we get this first lesson properly, then we will understand that marriage is not all about feelings. It's all about a decision. And when you make that decision, you have to be responsible for your decision and the consequences of your choices. And so, marriage is not a command. It's a choice. But when you make that choice, it now becomes a command, no divorce. And that is why Jesus explains to his apostles and to his listeners in Matthew chapter 19, verse 5 to 12, that some people are born not to get married. And that some people decide not to get married because they have a kind of hormonal makeup that did not permit them. 
and that there are some people who decide not to get married because of the kingdom. They want to serve God. And so whether you are single, just to be on your own, or you are single like the priests of the Roman Catholic Church to serve God, or the nuns, you have not committed any offense. Be faithful to your choice and decisions and accept the consequences. But by the time you have decided to get married, then be responsible. Make the right choices. And so my dear friends in Christ, this is the area I want us to look at. Does my will and my view aligns to the will of God in this marriage? And this man I want to marry, or this woman I want to marry. For the woman, am I ready to accept this man the way he is? Or my intention is to use him to satisfy my needs. And if he cannot satisfy it, I say I need a divorce. And for the man, is your intention that you have to labor, you have to work hard to provide for the needs of your wife and your family? Or you just want to be responsible? That is why the first reading tells us, Genesis chapter 2, that when God created man, he gave him that authority over everything to do what? To till and to earn his living. To work hard. A responsibility. And in chapter 2, verse 24, he says, The man now will leave his father and mother because he has something to earn a living and clings to a woman. And the two become one flesh. And what God has joined together, let no man or woman separate. Not even the couples. But we know that in the course of the marriage, there will be crisis. Divorce is not the solution to marital crisis. I want us to pay attention to this. Divorce is not the solution to marital crisis. The solution to marital crisis is counseling. And that is why the couples who come to the church and take the vow before God and themselves, the priest is just a witness and all their friends. And the priest will guide you, okay, you can get a professional counselor and then you look into it because both of them want to make it work. It's a responsibility. Marriage is a responsibility. If one person wants to make it work and the other person doesn't want to make it work, it will not work. That is why the two will always live a life of prayer and commitment. You can pick any woman or any man from anywhere. Whether he was in the nightclub or he was in the church or he was in the beach, wherever. Or you travel to another country. It is your choice. But Build your marriage in responsibility. Be prayerful. And every man, give your wife all the attention she needs. Women need attention. Because she was made by part of your rib. And so wherever you are, you are not complete. Always check on your wife. Give her a call. Whatever she presents to you, appreciate it. Women need attention. Then men need respect. Once men give their wives attention, what happens? Respect comes automatically. Women are very good at that. But when you don't pay attention to them, you will always be disrespected. And don't blame the woman because the man is the cause. You did not do your assignment well. So that is how marriage is. 
So for young people who are afraid to get married, do not be afraid. Marriage is a gift from God. It's a blessing. It is in marriage that family begins. And it is from that family that the domestic church begins. And that is why in the gospel, the last part of it, little children came to Jesus and Jesus blessed them because it is in that same union that children are being raised in the fear of God, in the love of God, in happiness and responsibility because they see their parents living and struggling to raise them up and the desire to get married. So my dear friends, let us be like Jesus whom in the second reading he says that I endure for your sake because through suffering I made salvation possible. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 9. And so let us know that marriage is not just a bed of roses. Marriage is a mountain of roses. Do we understand that? You have to climb. And it's a struggle. Don't give up. Fix your marriages. For those who have been involved in any divorce, don't blame yourself. But go to the Lord and ask the Lord for strength. For those who want to go into divorce, please, not yet. Go for counseling. Both of you should try to make it work. And for young men who are afraid to get married, don't be afraid. Try it if you can. But if you are feeling not to, you have not committed any offense. I am not married. If I live a good life as a priest, I will go to heaven. Amen. Do not be afraid. Jesus is with you. And the world will always be a better place when we have faith. Peace be with you.